Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In the previous videos, we saw that cyclic compounds cannot freely rotate, thus there's restricted flexibility or restricted uh, motions that that molecule can undergo. And this creates a situation where putting substitution on one side or the other of the ring is no longer equivalent because they can't interconvert. And we see this in situations where we have substitution on a ring such as this 1,2-dibromocyclopropane where we have two different bromine groups um, and if you look at this in the three-dimensional model you see that there are hydrogens on the top of this ring on, above the plane of the ring and there are hydrogens below the plane of the ring they cannot interconvert because there is no free rotation about any of the carbon-carbon bonds so what happens if we place the bromines on different uh, sides of the ring relative to each other well, let's take a close look at that. Here are two different compounds, actually, with the bromines attached to the exact same carbons. They're 1,2-dibromocyclopropane for both of these. However, in the case on the left, one bromine is on the top side of the ring, and one bromine is on the bottom side of the ring. When they are on opposite sides, we actually refer to this as the trans compounds. So that's a new term for you, trans meaning opposite sides. And if we put those bromines on the same side of the ring, such as this compound, it's still a 1,2-dibromocyclopropane because the bromines in their relationships to all the other atoms, all the bonds are the same. They're just oriented differently in three dimensions, and that cannot interconvert with the one on the left, and so we refer to that when they're on the same side as the cis compound. Cis, same, trans, opposite. Okay, so this type of isomerism we refer to as stereoisomerism. The definition of a stereoisomer is an isomer in which all the same number and kind of atoms are present and they're all connected to the same atoms. They just differ in their arrangement in three dimensions. We haven't changed any atoms bonding to other atoms. We've only oriented them in different positions in three dimensions. And in fact, stereoisomers cannot interconvert, so they are different isomers. They're not the same molecule. Due to restricted rotation in cycloalkanes, this makes these types of stereoisomers possible. And so when we have substitution on a cycloalkane ring, they can be on the same side of the ring or opposite sides of the ring. Again, that refers to the cis or the trans stereoisomer. Now here's an example of a cyclopentane now with two methyl groups attached and in this case I put them in the three oops in the one three orientation so this happens to be one three dimethyl cyclopentane and you notice I've drawn these with a bold wedged line indicating that they're coming up towards us off the plane of the paper and if you look at the side view of that you can see that those two that are up here I've drawn one in this position, one in this position. They're on the same side of the ring. So this is the cis isomer. Alternatively, I could draw that 1,3-dimethyl cyclopentane as the trans isomer where one of them is up and the other one is down. Okay, and again, from the side perspective view, you can see that one is on the top side of the ring and the other one is on the bottom side of the ring. These cannot interconvert at all. They are not the same. They're different stereoisomers. Thus, one is the cis isomer on the same side. The other is the trans isomer. The groups are positioned on opposite sides of the rings. That being different, everything else is exactly the same. This carbon is still attached to that one in both of the molecules, and this carbon is still attached to that one in both of the molecules. They only defer in their orientation in three dimensions. Well, in the last video, we talked about cyclohexane conformations and the fact that if you put substituents now on the ring, that there are some energetic consequences to having that in an axial or an equatorial position. So let's take a look at what happens when we have more than one substituent and different stereoisomers of them. We can see that in some cases, depending on their relationship around the ring and their particular stereoisomer, that the energy can be either identical or higher and lower from one chair flipped ring structure to another. And this is a result of the fact that the axial and equatorial positions of the ring alternate as you go from one carbon to the other in terms of the face of the ring. So up, the up position on each of these carbons and the down positions on each of these carbons are not necessarily directly related to axial or equatorial. 
we can't say that all axials are up. Some axials are down. In this case, that's an axial hydrogen, but it's in the down position on this carbon. Okay, the up position or the top face of the ring is equatorial. So notice the up position or the top position is axial, equatorial, and I haven't drawn it here, but I will. Axial, equatorial, that's the up position, axial, and equatorial. Whereas the down position in this case is equatorial, axial, equatorial, that's the down position on that carbon. The down position on the next carbon is axial. The down position on the next carbon is equatorial and the down position on the last one here is axial. So the axial equatorial relative to the face of the ring, if we were to draw it flat like this, uh, would alternate from one carbon to the next as we look at this chair cyclohexane structure. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what happens when we have 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. And we'll take a look at both stereoisomers. So in the first case, we're going to examine the cis stereoisomer, where they are both on the same side of the ring. In this case, I've drawn them both up. Again, what that does is place one of those CH3 groups in an axial position, which we know is more crowded because it's closer to these hydrogens that are on that top face axial positions around the ring. Whereas the equatorial position is more open. So this is more crowded and this is uh, more open space. Now what happens if we take this situation and we do the ring flip so all positions on the ring will will flip uh, and I'm just gonna highlight in particular this carbon and this carbon because this flips down and this twists up so what happens is this axial methyl group will become equatorial when that carbon flips okay whereas this equatorial CH3 group as that shifts up that will become axial. So if we compare the structure on the left to the ring flipped conformation on the right we see that we have one axial one equatorial and on the right we have one axial and one equatorial thus the relationships or the interactions are identical on both sides so they would have the same energy for either of those conformations. Okay is that the case for the other stereoisomer? Well, in fact, no, because if we now look at the trans 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane, one of the methyl groups is up and one is down on the adjacent carbons, 1 and 2. In this case, one of the conformations will have both of them axial, so here's the up position and here's the down position on the adjacent carbon. They're both axial, so we have two axial methyl groups here. The one on top interacts with these axial hydrogens and sterically crowds. The one on the bottom will interact with these axial hydrogens and crowd. If we do the ring flip, both axial positions will then become equatorial. So this is actually the best situation. Both of those are less crowded and thus this molecule is going to be lower in energy because here we have more axial uh, steric crowding and here we have less. We have only equatorial groups. So we can analyze those conformations and see that simply by changing the stereochemistry from cis to trans and not moving the positions around the ring, it has an impact on the relative energies of the different ring flipped conformations. Here's a space filling model to show you that cis 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane from the side view. You can see that one of the methyl groups happens to be in an axial position and one in an equatorial position. And if we look at this from the top view, we can see that a little more acutely. So here's the axial position pointing right up to us, and here's the equatorial position. You can see here on the space filling model the two different uh, positions, axial and equatorial. And here there are the 1,3 diaxial interactions that we see between the hydrogens that are on the axial positions on that side of the ring. Here is the trans isomer where they're on opposite sides of the ring and you can see in this particular one conformation we have both of these axial and you can see here in the side view uh, chair model and in the space filling view we see that now they are both equatorial and they're both in much more open space and from our top view we can see that those groups indeed do have more space and the axial positions here are three hydrogens up and on the other bonds there's three hydrogens pointing straight down axial 
in the other alternating positions. Okay, if we analyze the molecule that's the, now the 1,3-dimethylcyclohexane, so we've moved one of the methyl groups one carbon further away, now we see just the opposite thing when we look at the cis versus the trans, because again, the up position axial equatorial axial equatorial alternates as you go around the ring. So what was axial and equatorial now becomes axial. So the cis compound has both CH3 groups axial in one conformation and if we do the ring flip they're both equatorial. So they're not equal in energy. We have one lower in energy than the other. Whereas now the trans isomer where one is up and one is down we have an axial equatorial do the ring flip we end up with one axial, one equatorial, they are identical energies. What would you think would happen if instead of the 1,3-dimethylcyclohexane we now have the 1,4-dimethylcyclohexane? Let's move this group now to the 4 position. Okay, 1,4-dimethylcyclohexane. It's going to be an alternating as well, so axial, equatorial, axial equatorial. So if the methyl group is on the fourth carbon, it's going to be one axial, one equatorial, and we do the ring flip, you're going to again have one axial and one equatorial. This one equatorial, this one axial. And vice versa, if it's trans, you're going to have both of them axial, so this is up, and on this position there's the up and down, so if CH3 is down, that's also axial, and the ring flip will have an equatorial and equatorial. Well, a chair structure is not the only conformation a cyclohexane can adopt, and we mentioned this briefly in the last video, where there's a higher energy conformation where both ends of the ring are puckered in one direction, and it makes it look like a boat. So we refer to that as the boat cyclohexane conformation. And here are two views of that. We can look at it from the side where we can clearly see this boat-like shape, and because of that what we have are some hydrogens which are eclipsing, some of the bonds are eclipsing, so we, it is a higher energy conformation. If we look at this from uh, this view, so if our eyeballs here and we look down this view, that's the same as looking in this direction, so we see this up and this up, that would be here and here. We can see those eclipsing interactions from the hydrogens that are on the sides. So that's the boat conformation. And since it's higher in energy, why do we need to consider it? Well, there are molecules which have even more restricted rigidity, which force it into a boat conformation, such as this molecule norbornane. Norbornane is a six-membered ring, which I've highlighted in the blue here. There's the cyclohexane. But it happens to be attached with another CH2 group attaching across or bridging across the ring. And because of the rigidity of that, this six-membered ring part of the molecule here is forced and stuck in a boat conformation. So molecules like norbornane, we need to consider uh, those conformations. And then any other groups that are hanging off, we know something about what impacts of being in three-dimensional space are. Well, chair structures are important for a lot of reasons, one of those being biology, and uh, in particular biomolecules like sugar. Sugar is a six-membered ring, and it, it can be in an open form, but it usually exists in the six-membered ring where one of these oxygens is actually cyclized onto that carbon. So you notice there's an oxygen in the ring, it's not completely all carbons, but it's still a six-membered ring. And so it does adopt a chair conformation as its most stable structure. And you can see that one of these particular sugars, this happens to be glucose, has all of the hydroxyl groups of the glucose in equatorial positions, and that will be the most favored conformation. The CH2OH, which is down here on the structure on the left, is also in an equatorial position. So it is important to understand the three-dimensional conformations of cyclohexane-type structures so that we can actually relate that to things we see in biology. Here you can see more chair-like structures of sugar molecules which are now linked together into polymers. These are what we refer to as starches or polysaccharides. And you can see those linkages uh, do uh, affect how those chains are put together. And so you can see here's an axial bond and an equatorial bond, axial on that ring, equatorial on that ring, and so on. And depending on those orientations and the particular stereoisomers, they have different 
abilities to be metabolized or impact different biochemical reactions. The structure and the three-dimensional chair structure in particular is important to understand when if you're going on to talk about uh, biochemistry and biology of uh, sugar molecules. Even larger rings sizes and fused rings we have to take into account that they adopt various conformations. Some are very, very rigid, some are a little bit more flexible, but the shapes of the molecules of these fused and polycyclic molecules does impact their biology. So if we take a look at this flat structure here, this is a, a six-membered ring, six-membered ring, six-membered ring, and five-membered ring. This core structure uh, represents the core of a class of compounds we call steroids. Cholesterol being one, some of the hormones, estrogen, things like that, uh, they all have this this base sort of structure. And we can draw it flat like this, showing groups up or down on it. However, the actual shape of the molecule, we have to take into account what the conformations of all of those six-membered rings are. And here you can see that there's a chair structure there, there's a chair structure there, there's a chair structure there, and then there's that sort of envelope five-membered ring. That overall gives a shape to the molecule, that slightly cup shape. And that also impacts how it binds in various proteins and enzymes in the body. So the three-dimensional structure and the conformations that are accessible do impact the biology and the chemistry going on in living organisms.